Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us today. Um, there is a there is a poll, so if you guys don't mind, if you guys could fill that out, that would be very helpful for us to, uh, as well. Um, also, this is an interactive session, so if you guys do have any questions, please just hit that chat button and type away any questions that you guys might have. Uh, the chat is private, so if there are any questions, then it's just going to be sent to Paige or myself, not to everyone else. Um, also, for the uh, for the poll, if you get, if it is other, if you could specify that in the chat too, that'd be fantastic. Cool. Thank you, guys. We'll give everyone maybe another minute or so to to jump in. Then I think we could start. See, there's some people joining, guys. There's a there's a poll, so if you guys don't mind to fill that out, that's great. And then just if there's any questions that you guys have, the chat button's right there. Type away any question that you guys have, and we'll answer those at the end. Give everyone else another 30 seconds or so to join. Give everyone else another 10 seconds. <clears throat> All right, guys. I think we could. Uh, I think we could get started. So, uh, thank you, everyone, for for joining. Um, the goal of this live demonstration workshop is to provide everyone with an overview of OpenBOM and to highlight the integration that we have with uh, Fusion 360 as well. Uh, this is also going to be an interactive se section. So if you guys do have any questions, feel free to hit the chat button. Uh, we'll just hold off to answer all questions till the very end. But if you have any questions throughout the presentation, please feel free just to, just to type those in. We might not be able to go into too much detail with all of the questions. Uh, so if you do need more time, let us know and we could schedule more time just one-on-one -on -one to go deeper into your case study. Uh, also, we would like to hear from you guys. So if you could share with us your biggest pain or really what brought you to Open Bomb, what are you trying to solve? Type that into the chat as well. That's going to be helpful for, for us. Um, and lastly, this is going to be recorded. So it's uh, you're, you guys will probably get the, uh, the recorded session in maybe a couple hours or so. So if there's anyone else on your team or Anyone else that you think can benefit this, uh, from this, please feel free to share it with them as well. Uh, so let me introduce Pedro Bronco. He will be leading the session and he is our customer success specialist. Uh, so thank you everyone again for taking time with us today. Pedro, take it away. Okay, thanks. Uh, thanks, Jared. So uh, I will, I'll start by showing my screen where you can see it. And uh, so the goal of today is to go through understanding what Open Bond is, and I will focus on with the Fusion uh, integration. So the the scenario I have today is a company that makes uh, these uh, bike carriers. So we have a lot of demos with with bikes. So I thought it was a good idea to uh, show a product that can have a bit of uh, some raw materials, some mechanical items. And we can also see the benefit of uh, getting uh, bill of materials out of Fusion, understand more about bill of materials, also how they are, can be as design, can be manufacturing bombs or production bombs. So we, we'll start going through a, a case where we do want to sell this bike rack to, to customers uh, and focus on delivering uh, this product to them, including packaging, including uh, you know, some options that uh, they might want. Uh, like the sort of lights that they might opt to to use. So uh, I have already uh, OpenBOM installed in Fusion. So you can install it from the App Store. You will have those couple of buttons there. So the first setup uh, into getting uh, it started is mapping Fusion uh, properties and data. So we can bring a lot of data from Fusion. I already have generated this to OpenBOM. So you can see this panel, all the data we can uh, extract from Fusion, like volumes, lengths, widths, uh, moments of inertia. So you can configure these columns by going into settings. 
I recommend just re removing or uh, setting up the ones that you really need. So you just go to the template manager and then uh, create a new template and delete the properties that you don't want to use, don't want to bring to open bomb. For example, moments of inertia uh, might be too much, but could be useful to have mass, for example, or lengths and widths for uh, material calculation. So if you notice uh, my example, I have a few cases where uh, I'm bringing, for example, mass and using open bomb uh, formulas to calculate the total uh, total mass, total uh, weight of the, this product for, for example, for transport calculation. You can have that on the top assembly, but it could be an easy Excel-like approach to have a total length. So today, I uh, already sent this data to, to open bomb by using the create update uh, bill of material. And uh, once you do that, uh, you have you can have the data directly in OpenBOM. You can see it on a on a panel just inside Fusion. Uh, you can see you know all levels, uh, and you can see the right quantities coming in from Fusion. You also have uh, links directly for from the Fusion uh, documents, um, and uh, you can also see this interface if you open this in a web browser. So if you open this directly in OpenBOM, you jump into uh, this uh, web interface, so it's cloud-based, available anywhere from any device, and uh, you gain extra visualization capabilities, so you can actually open the, your BOM product in a more of a diagram view. We call it graph navigation. This is very useful for, uh, you know, dealing with complex structures, understanding where you use, understanding your product better, uh, so um, very useful for um you know the more complex your product is the more levels your bomb has more components more uh, navigation is useful to understand uh you know your structure i have uh, created a few uh, extra items here for example i have been defining raw materials uh, from fusion so doing extra a material calculation. So we're going to focus a bit how this works with Fusion. I can see a lot of users are looking or using Excel to do that, or this goes beyond what Fusion uh, Bill of Materials functions can do. Uh, but it's something we can do into OpenBOM is, is start creating a production bill of material that's focused on what you need to buy to make, make the thing and, and ship it through the door to, to your customers. So when we send data to uh, from OpenBOM, you also see uh, the build material on a grid interface, like you can open this build of material uh, just like using that open build of material command over there. So you just click, uh, can just open from there. I uh, already have it open here for convenience. It looks like this on a, with a grid, uh, grid view, uh, multi-level. Uh, we also have been generating like uh, step files from here, from, from Fusion. So all those steps can also be easily shared with suppliers. And all this information was extracted directly from Fusion data. I have created a very simple formula that you can use to, for example, calculate total costs. Uh, this example is calculating total mass of the assembly in kilos. Uh, and, you know, this is around 28 kilos, which is not too bad. Uh, for a bike rack, or a, it might be more a motorcycle rack, but um, it's still uh, still useful to know if you want to put this on a container, how much does it weigh, you can do these calculations very easily. Uh, now, how do you start preparing the build material from Fusion to Open Bomb? You can see that I have numbered part numbers here. Uh, I don't have all items. For example, the, the license plate is something that uh, I don't have it in my build of material just because uh, I don't I don't need it. So we have functions inside Fusion to select which uh, which components are more or less important to send to OpenBOM. For example, the license plate is something that we don't want to send because we don't ship this to the customer. You will get a license plate. We do want it in the drawing for just drawing purposes, but we have added functions where you can just click on exclude from bill of material and then uh, this this item will not be on the bill of material because it's just a reference item. Another example of, of reference items would be, for example, options. Uh, as you know, uh, when we're doing engineering design, we are building designing a one-off, so we are worried with creating drawings, but it's not uh, really advantageous to 
create all the options that a product can have. So imagine the lights of, of this uh, carrier, you know, just creating all the possible combinations uh, in CAD. It could be a lot of work. So it would be a lot simpler to use OpenBOM to deal with the options. And then you just have to worry about, you know, dimensions of, you know, it's structural drawings uh, and do something uh, like this. Uh, for example, you would have uh, an order of uh, your your items, your components. Let me just bring this into uh, at a higher level. For example, let's see this at a higher level and open this customer order as one uh, one example. So a customer order could be that something that looks like this. So it will have packaging it will have the light that the customer has chosen. And uh, and from here, you can, you know, add any sort of a combination of lights that you, you have. Like you might have, you know, 300 variations of, um, of this light option, like a, a reinforced one, a LED one. So you can, uh, you can really have, you know, option 300. So instead of having to create all these options in Fusion, uh, you can just put that out of uh, out of the Fusion Builder material and manage that out, you know, independently according to what the customer has ordered, and then this is what you're going to deliver. All this uh, data from Fusion will continue to update. So you have all items. If you add more, you can continue uh, continue doing updates, and then you can then deliver this product. Uh, to to the customer, so we we have a lot more functions that are not just having the as design build material from Fusion. So that would be what you can achieve by using just the Fusion functions. Just uh, getting a build of material out of Fusion, it will be the Fusion build of material. But you can add uh, lubricants, you can add packaging, and you can also plan to deliver this to your customer with uh, with OpenBOM. So you can create an order, and for example, you can plan to deliver one or five or ten units to the customer. So an order is more like a production bill of material or planning bill of material. Uh, it can have the total quantities, for example, for materials that are required. It only has the items that you need to buy to make the thing. And you can have you can put it on a different order. For example, it could be the uh, assembly order. For example, the lights are almost the last thing to fit in in your in, in building the thing. So it could be at the end of the build material in a completely different position compared to what you have in Fusion. So this is the value you will bring from uh, you know any integration with CAD is that you can build uh, production in order build of materials. You can start creating a build material with uh, you know, all uh, elements, packaging, lubricant, seals, um, stickers, you know, different colors. You can manage uh, what you want to deliver to the customer, and then uh, you have accurate uh, updates directly from Fusion. So um, I, I was talking about doing a bit of a raw material calculation. I want to focus a bit on that in this example because it does have you know, a, a common material here. So if you look into this uh, profile here, it's all the same material, but you have, you know, you want to know how, what is the total length that you need to buy to actually make this product. So how we are doing this is in OpenBOM is we are adding an extra child in, in a raw material. We are uh, putting this quantity, which is 600, that's the length. And then uh, OpenBOM knows, uh, you know, we have four profiles of each, and it knows how to calculate that into a total quantity. So even if I create and start a, a brand new one and uh, use, uh, you know, a, a simple raw material calculation, let me just start uh, like a new one with this, uh, with this material. So you see how that would work. So, uh, for example, this would have uh, one profile, and let's uh, add uh, the same one. So we have two, and let's just bring uh, bring this one a bit forward here. So we basically have. Let me just uh, bring this here. So we have, you know, two lengths of material, um, and uh, we want to. Uh, Save this. Let's save this and and generate a bill of material out of here. Just uh, 
got demonstration for now. I'll save it and we'll get a bomb out of here. So the open bomb menus are on the utilities menu there. And uh, I already have set some part numbers in this uh, item. So if we go into properties, you can see there's already a, a part number uh, being saved. Uh, sorry, not uh, this one, not this one over here. Sorry about that. I need to start again. I want another one. So this is not the right version here. Let me just bring that up. And the one I want will be version seven. Let me bring that up. Uh, yes, so that's the one. Yeah, that's the one I want. So I'm sorry about that. Yeah, version seven. Uh, yeah, that's the one. Sorry about that. So this one should have the the right part number, which will be the raw material. So that's what I want to bring. Let me do that again. So we should have two profiles over here. And we should have a part number inputted, which would be the, the raw material uh, code. So let me just bring that again. Okay, and we should have a raw material here in the properties. So this will be like the raw material code that you specify there it is. That's the raw material code uh, for 005. That's the one we want. So uh, now if I uh, bomb this out, just create a bill material out of this. Let me just uh, do that, create a bill material. And let's just get that out to uh, a bomb. And because I already have a children with the raw material, uh, you will uh, we will have the raw material calculation done in uh, in open bomb. So let's just get that uh, bomb uh, out. Uh, it's just generating. Just uh, log in there. pretty safe. So uh, logging in and uh, seeing the result of the raw material calculation. So we have uh, the length, we have the material as a child, 600 uh, being used, quantity two, that's correct. So if I now move into, for example, a flattened view, uh, I have the total uh, total calculation in, in with material there. And I can switch this into, for example, a purchase view, which is the materials that I want to purchase just to show the, the raw material length that I need to buy. So the other item was not purchased, was was made. I will cut it and I will, will assemble it and, and weld it together. But it's a very simple way to show you know, why you need you know, uh, you know, more bill material functions to, to deliver your products. Uh, just outside what you have available in 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 CAD in computer aided design, like in Fusion, in other CAD tools like SolidWorks or Creo or Onshape, they all need extra functions to to be more focusing on calculating manufacturing bill materials, production bill materials, and uh, you know be able to you know deliver those products quickly to to customers. Uh, that's that's the the end the end, end game the end result. So I have other examples. So you notice that I do quite have quite a few number uh, part numbers in uh, in these models. We can automate the creation of part numbering directly from uh, from uh, the fusion model. So I, you can see you have descriptive names, but we can get uh, functions to generate part numbers automatically. Now this works on. Uh, creating a part numbering schema in uh, in your catalog. So the setup is a prefix and a counter, but we can configure ranges. We can configure prefixes. So you define uh, uh, what is your part numbering schema, and then you can generate uh, part numbers uh, with with a button click, uh, either from an assembly or sub assemblies. You can generate them all in uh, in one go uh, and generate all those part numbers. Uh, even recursively go to assembly items and you know and do this for for all items. So this is a very easy way to to do part numbering, and uh, and and have you know accurate and unique components in your build material. So it's quite important 
in terms of when managing data and managing your parts is that you, you number your components. So the physical part you have in your hand is the same number as you have in your model. So you have accurate part numbering. It's very crucial in, in product uh, management and, and having accurate bill materials. So also going to point out, uh, you know, new uh, features uh, coming into fusion integration, which will be the integration with uh, the manage features with release and change management. So uh, we have now the ability to bring pull those options from uh, the extra manage properties. So if you click on uh, manage properties now, you are going to have access to the manage uh, fusion manage uh, properties like life cycle, linking to change orders, uh, managing its state, managing its revision. We do have, uh, you know, the same functions in OpenBOM to manage uh, revisions, to manage change management. So the, they are also uh, available in OpenBOM. So we have change management features. You can understand, you know, your your change orders. You can understand uh, very quickly what's uh, the affected items that you need to to change. Collaborate with the change management. So we do also have those features, understanding impact, where use, so all this sort of navigation. It's very, very easy and available to to understand, you know, where used information. But if you uh, if you use uh, manage uh, and it's going to use um, fusion manage, then we can integrate with those properties, and uh, you can you can use the change orders available in manage. We'll be curious to know, uh, you know. Which ones of you are using uh, Fusion Manage at the moment, um, and um, also understanding some of some of the current challenges in in extracting data from from Fusion? If it is more material calculation, it's just quantities, but you also want to calculate raw material quantities there. Another a new feature coming in would be the ability to create PDFs out of uh, manage uh, drawings so that will be coming uh, soon on the next release so i do recommend that you actually have a look to our uh, latest blog to on the fusion uh, enhancements so we are uh, getting pdfs uh, out of fusion uh, so it's a new option available send drawings and uh, the drawings will be pdf so you have those pdf links available and you can just uh, you know click click them to open very very easily, and they are also version control, so you can have different revisions on them. And again, we also rehearse um, focusing on sharing the, the new Fusion data available on bill materials in case that you use uh, Fusion and you want to do change management and uh, revisioning uh, from uh, from there. But we also have those features in OpenBOM if you if you want want to use OpenBOM to manage bill materials to manage change management to create um, order bombs and production bill materials and uh, and do production planning to to deliver your products. So um, yeah, on a very, uh, very quick uh, demonstration, I have shown you the value of open bomb just by uh, having a very easy to use interface, very important for complex structures to find the right information. It's a database, you can find things quickly, you can navigate to product structures easily. And also it can make uh, can help you make faster decisions if you find your information quickly and you, you can understand. Also, if you can believe that that's the latest information, that's also very important. It's not in multiple Excel files uh, scattered from multiple folders. So you just log in and you have access to the latest and you believe it's the latest. That's very important. And then we have functions to uh, create complete build materials that are not just fusion bombs. They are also uh, packaging, lubricants, uh, you know, customer options. I gave the example with lights, a great example uh, to, you know, how you can simplify your, your data management does not by not trying to create to create everything in 3D, everything in CAD could be quite expensive. You know, those tools take time to model. Uh, so you can take all that uh, weight out of out of those CAD tools and have a proper tool to build build materials to do build materials management with with a highly visual interface. So um, yeah, this was what I wanted to show you today. So I'm, I'm happy to take some questions now. Uh, Jared, how are we looking in terms of uh, questions so far <clears throat> yes Pedro thank you um, so we have one from uh, 10 minutes ago so it was during your presentation um, will it bring that assembly across as a top level bomb or just a regular bomb 
So it will bring it as a top level bomb. So we have a place to uh, see all top level bill of materials. So uh, you will see that uh, that one over here. So it will be um, one of these bill of materials. So we'll bring the top level bill of material. So for example, that's the that order you were seeing over there. That's the that's the top bill of material. Great. Thank you, Pedro. Yes, Guys, any other questions? We'll give everyone else a few more minutes to ask. Is the discussion the same for electronic parts? Pedro, maybe if you want to take some time to explain this. Um, sorry, what, what do you mean? I, uh, we also have integration with Altium and an ECAD tool, so we can we can create complete bombs with ECAD and MCAD, if that's the question. I can show you an example where you do have a, a mix of the two together. For example, this example, we'd, uh, we have MCAD in one side. So this, we move into multi-level. So we have packaging, complete product, uh, ECAD. Uh, this is ECAD data. And then uh, one from ECAD data will be the PCB. And then uh, Altium is updating the children. So bringing all the components from uh, from e, from M, e CAD, from electronic CAD, so we can have you know complete bill of materials in in open bomb. Thanks, Pedro. Um, back to the original question: Does it make subassemblies into individual bombs? Uh, yes, yes, it does. So uh, subassemblies will be individual bombs. Okay, a little bit of a longer question. Does OpenBOM standalone offer basic PLM functionalities like master data management, document management, change and release management? Uh, maybe Pedro, if you want to answer that real quick, but Walter, if you want to, maybe we could dive a little bit deeper into this. Yeah, maybe a follow-up call will be important. Uh, PLM is quite a, a wide uh, subject, but yes, we do have, uh, uh, Bomb management, everything is item centric. Uh, we you get we can manage your your design data. Uh, we can manage the life cycle of your products. Uh, we can also uh, add uh, managing supplier, approved vendors, uh, other requirements. You know projects. So we we can uh, we can manage all that uh, data and going a bit beyond just build materials uh, and and manage your product life cycle. The answer is yes and. Maybe Jared for a follow-up call will be will be a, an important step. Agreed. Thank you. Um, does OpenBomb integrate with um, Autodesk Eagle? So uh, we uh, we have a, a an integration with Eagle that is is part of a, uh, it needs to be scoped and and defined. So uh, maybe we can also do a follow-up in terms of the options to integrate with Eagle. Okay. Does anyone else have any further questions? <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, keep you guys uh, maybe another minute or so. If you guys do have any questions that we have not answered, uh, please feel free to email us at supports at openbomb.com. I just shared it in the chat. Uh, we would be happy to schedule a call with you guys, go deeper into your case study as well. So everyone, thank you very much for your time. We uh, we appreciate it. And we hope to see you guys using OpenBomb soon. Bye. Thank you guys.